Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we finally have another tropical storm to talk about, Tropical Storm Elsa. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do any of you think there's a chance this one becomes a hurricane, or do you think it will not become a hurricane? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at this satellite imagery, and this one has some nice structure to it. Yesterday morning, I told you guys, I think about 24 hours or so, it would be a tropical storm, and it, sure enough, is definitely a tropical storm by this point. Very nice structure there, that buzzsaw look. Look at the outside of the storm. You see how it looks like it has little tiny uh, blades, kind of like a, a, a buzzsaw look there. That is what we're looking for, for an intense storm. Uh, and as you can see, this is our cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center. I'm just going to go right ahead and show you guys this first things first. This one is expected to move west at 25 miles per hour, which, by the way, is pretty fast for a tropical system. Maximum sustained winds are at about 40 miles per hour, which is actually high as well for a tropical storm. We're already moving along uh, pretty nicely with the development here. So we're going to need to watch this one closely, especially... Uh, as it's just heading towards some islands, heading towards Dominican Republic, possibly Jamaica, and most likely Cuba as well, uh, which might take a direct impact. We're going to need to watch all of these things that will obviously hinder the development, of course, as it hits Cuba. Uh, likely, I would say about a you know 75% chance or more that it hits Cuba at this point, just based on the track, based on the speed, it's not going to take it too long. And that would be happening around uh, Sunday, Monday time frame, and then for Florida, it's more of a Tuesday, Wednesday time frame as far as impacts for you guys. If it hits Florida, because it could go a little bit more into the middle of the Gulf, potentially threatening the Gulf states, and it could go offshore of the East Coast. I've eyeballed that potential as well. We'll talk later on about that. Uh, anywhere from the Florida East Coast all the way up to the Northeast Coast is a potentially at risk with this one as well. Uh, obviously, those would be much later dates depending on how far north it would go uh, and impact the states. All right, now let's go ahead and move on and talk about the probability of tropical depression. It's already a tropical storm, so it's obviously a 90 to 100% chance of being above tropical depression status. Uh, and then by the time we're taking a look at days one through four, so this is one day from now through three days later, uh, we have an 80 to 90% chance of it still being a tropical storm. Uh, now the European model, which this is obviously the European model, uh, has it hitting more Dominican Republic and Haiti and going offshore of the East Coast. Uh, so that's going to be something we're watching, but probability of hurricane is the zero to 10% chance at this point, according to the European model there on the probability forecast. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to update you guys and talk about all things spaghetti models. We're going to go over the GFS ensemble model, European ensemble model, Canadian ensemble model, and then all of the individual models. And then even take a look at the intensity guidance for a shocking amount show a hurricane. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look, first things first, at the GEFS model, which is our GFS ensemble model. And as you can see, this one actually takes it very far west, even not really putting the middle of Florida at, at risk, but mostly the panhandle or even some states that are further west there in the Gulf. The very far western regions of Cuba would also be at risk here, but anywhere from Texas to Florida, according to the GEFS model, would be uh, the biggest threat. But as you can see, uh, the purple one there, is uh, our high-res GFS model. We see the ensemble mean, which means the mean average of all of these individual spaghetti noodles, if you will, is the black one there. So most of these kind of uh, bigger uh, lines that you want to follow, the ensemble, the control, and the high-res, which is the normal GFS, they all show it hitting the Florida panhandle area. And as you can see, the normal GFS, which again is the purple one, takes it up the east coast, possibly bringing some rain and some windiness they're obviously not as big as the initial impact zone. Here is our European ensemble model. Big difference here, as you can see, this one hits Dominican Republic and Haiti, most likely. A couple of these show a Florida panhandle hit. A couple also show an East Coast Florida hit or a North Carolina hit there as well, skirting along the East Coast. That's actually the strongest scenario as far as intensity. But a majority of these show it way offshore of the East Coast. This is obviously pretty interesting because it's way different than the GFS ensemble model. Now here's a concerning look as well. The Canadian ensemble model shows something in between. Not really a panhandle hit mostly, but an east coast of Florida hit all the way up the Carolina coast uh, and the northeast coast as well, skirting along the entire east coast. This is the worst case scenario because it stays kind of over water enough 
to keep its intensity and keep intensifying, but it impacts all of these states and all of these coastlines, this would be kind of a nightmare scenario. So we're hoping this doesn't happen, obviously. The Canadian Ensemble model is known for kind of disagreeing with itself more. As you can see, we see some showing a, a Texas hit all the way to some showing an out to sea hit and then everything in between. So this one is spread all over the place. Just the mean average has it going up the East Coast. Now here is all of the individual models. And as you can see, uh, we have most of these showing a Jamaica and then Cuba hit and then maybe a Florida hit. We do have a couple that take it up towards the North Carolina regions. We have some showing it a direct hit with Florida, but actually a majority of these show that panhandle of Florida hit. Uh, and then some of these also show kind of a Bahamas and then curving out to sea type scenario as well. So there is many options on the table, uh, but for now we know it's heading west, it's heading towards the Southern Caribbean, and then it should curve north at some point. And that is going to dictate literally everything with this storm. Now what we're going to do is we are going to move on to that intensity guidance, like I said before, and take a look at some of those showing a hurricane potentially. We have a lot to go over, guys. So we're going to do that in just a moment. All right, now here is the intensity guidance. And as you can see, like I said, there is quite a few of these that show it going above category one, which is that yellow region. We also see some taking it to the orange area, which is a category two. A vast majority take this towards a strong tropical storm and never really have it hitting hurricane status. But regardless, it's gonna be right on the line, I think. I think it's gonna get close to a hurricane if it's not a hurricane. So this one will be on the upper end of a tropical storm for sure. Uh, now here is our tropical storm force wind speed probabilities and as you can see uh, this shows us where the no the national hurricane center expects this one to go basically uh, but we have more than 50 percent chance there in those yellow and gold and red regions but eventually uh, those areas that are green near cuba and florida as we get a more sure thing track with this storm those will turn yellow and orange and red most likely most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds we can see sunday monday time frame is uh, the most reasonable time frame for Florida, maybe even Tuesday, because this is the earliest reasonable arrival time of tropical storm force winds. Uh, so the most likely scenario is probably a little bit later than all of those times, but you can check that out um, on the map and find your area. Now here is our cyclonic vorticity, and that storm right there, according to the European model south of Puerto Rico, is actually the first one that we were talking about yesterday. That one heads towards Mexico and Central America. Our actual one that we've been talking about in this video, now on this next frame by 2 a.m. on Saturday, shows up south of Puerto Rico. So you can see we have two systems. That system, the one that we've been talking about, heads up towards the Bahamas by the time we're taking a look at about 15Z on Sunday, which is approximately 11 a.m. or so. And that first system that we've been talking about for days heads towards South America, or Central America, better yet, sorry, uh, and actually is a stronger storm. So yeah, the European model is all over the place. But here's the GFS model. And as you can see, this is going to be by about later on Friday. And this one is a much stronger system. This is the second one this time, the one we've been talking about in this video. South of Puerto Rico, this one has a Western Cuba hit with a very strong tropical cyclone, and then has kind of the panhandle, or I guess the area in between Maine, Florida, and then the panhandle. I don't know what you'd call that region there. It's kind of like the armpit of Florida, if you will, uh, but a very intense tropical system hits there. And as you can see, it reaches Virginia and North Carolina uh, as more of like a normal, not necessarily a tropical storm, but most likely remnants uh, that could bring some raininess and some windiness as well. Here is our official cone forecast here from Direct Weather for Tropical Storm Elsa. And we keep the options a little bit more wide. I don't like having a thinner cone that you have to move around. I'd rather keep all the options on the table. This is the reasonable cone that I could see happening. Uh, and I'm keeping it way wider, like I said, so it can go anywhere in between this. Rather than me trying to act like I have more confidence than I really do and keep a really thin cone and then have to move it all over the place, I'd rather just give you guys what's actually possible and be completely transparent. That's how I've always done this channel, though. And I'm pretty sure that's what you guys appreciate most about this channel anyway. But as you can see, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, and then out to sea also way further east than the east coast. None of those scenarios can be ruled out, and that's why they're in my cone. Also, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, and even uh, the Yucatan Peninsula there as well, and the Bahamas, all of these regions could be impacted directly by this storm. Uh, now, we have winds of 40 miles per hour. The low pressure center is 1,006 millibars the la last time I checked. The movement is west at 25 miles per hour, which, so it's basically racing westward, actually, it has been creeping further and further south. I'm going to continue to keep an eye on that scenario. Uh, the further and further south it goes, the less it's going to develop. That's going to kind of hinder it a little bit. So we're going to watch that closely. 
My July forecast will be out in some shape or form either today or tomorrow, by the way, guys. So be on the lookout for that. Also, we updated to the Hurricane Channel art, so I hope you guys like that as well. Smash the like button if you love uh, the Hurricane Channel art. I think it's the most classic direct weather look. The snowy one is my second favorite, but I think the Hurricane one is my favorite. Let me know what you guys think. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at a 4 out of 6. We were at a 3 out of 6. Obviously, we've gained confidence because this one has developed now, so we have a better picture of what to expect. The spaghetti models are a little bit more uh, narrowed, so there's a few things that are raising my confidence. In yesterday's comment of the day, I asked you guys what will happen with the two tropical cyclones we had at that point, and Judith Sterling Mendoza said, the first one will fizzle out, so check mark that one, but the second one will do some damage, and I really hope it doesn't, but I think that could be the case. And this got 22 likes, so a lot of you agreed. This was also one of the earlier comments, so Judith, great comment of the day there. You predicted it sooner than anybody else did, so great job there. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Bembenek, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Lair LePan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Garys, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Crenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hair Firms 1 and Catbite as well. You can join that one next to the subscribe button down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below because those two things help the algorithm so much. Also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.